In the world of software development, there's always been a search for the ideal architecture that will allow for scalability, flexibility, and ease of maintenance. One such architecture is the monolith. However, this approach came with several drawbacks. In this video, we'll delve into the limitations of the monolithic application, its evolution into microservices, and the emergence of capability-driven microservices, which offer a new way of approaching microservice decomposition. The monolithic application is a single code base linked to a static database schema. This meant that any modification to any part of the system could potentially have an impact on some other part. Without a clear scope, these monolithic applications would be expected to do everything at the company. As time progressed, modification of these monoliths became increasingly difficult due to the increasing complexity of both the application and database schema. However, the difficulty of this approach is that the effort required for changes increases disproportionately as the system complexity increases. This led to the emergence of microservices, which were an architectural approach to break up monolithic applications into well-defined smaller services. The idea behind microservices was that the larger system would be composed of many smaller applications with a clear scope and purpose. These separate services would have their own API contract, own their own database, and control their schema. This insulates them from change in other systems, thus increasing reliability and uptime in modern web applications. However, with microservices, there are several limitations. While certain domain areas might be independent, there are areas where there must be consistency across all applications. For example, security is an area where all microservices must implement authorization, but the implementation of specific rules around what users are authorized to do must be incorporated into each service. Furthermore, there is the risk that an architecture that involves deep core chains between related services due to services dependencies will result in high latency due to the number of hops and potential outages. A common approach to decomposing a monolith into separate microservices has been to break out specific parts of the domain. In this approach, each service has their own separate database and control over their schema. This separation means an outage of one service need not affect the rest of the system. It also means that separate teams can work on specific parts of the system in isolation. This approach segregates functionality, but remains tightly coupled to the schema and to the business domain. In contrast, capability-driven microservices offer a new approach to decomposing monoliths. The first and most important principle is that each microservice should have an explicit capability that is not tied to the business domain. The service should be able to handle a broad range of clients. For example, you might have a single service which stores and retrieves data. Rather than breaking applications down based on the sections of the domain, we create services which have fundamentally different capabilities. Capability-driven microservices offer a huge advantage in being able to quickly deliver APIs for applications with virtually no code. Furthermore, capabilities added to a microservice are available to all. If you need to add some new capability, say doing a complex data transformation, this feature is made available to all users of the service, not just a single narrow application. By decomposing your monolith into small reusable services, you maximize your investment and deliver real value. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about capability-driven microservices. Like and subscribe to join us on our journey into software development.